white-tailed deer who have been regarded as the toughest big game animal to hunt in North America. Now, this isn't just a rationalization by unsuccessful hunters to explain why they can't put venison on the table either. The legendary Fred Bear hunted with a bow and arrow for virtually every big game animal on Earth, and he always said the white-tailed deer was far and away the toughest animal to get close to with a bow and arrow. Now, don't jump to conclusions and say that deer are difficult to hunt because they're smart because that isn't true. Smartness is not a high-ranking characteristic in the world of wildlife. Animals don't reason and think and communicate the way they've often been portrayed in cartoons and movies. Animals react, and they're wary, but they're not blessed with an overabundance of brains. Deer are often spooky and sensitive to sounds and smells and sights in their environment, and it's because they're on the lookout for danger. Deer are in the group of animals that are plant eaters, and plant eaters in the animal kingdom are what the meat-eating animals feed on. The number one fear of a deer is a meat-eating animal, whether it's a wolf, a coyote, a mountain lion, a dog, a bear, or a human being. We're all meat-eaters, and the plant-eating animals are afraid of getting too close to us. This makes hunting deer a challenge because they use their keen senses to find out where we are. Now, the senses on a deer can be used to our advantage as hunters if we know how they work and what we can do to fool a deer's senses or attract the deer through its senses. Let's consider what we have to work with, though. The eyes. They work in all directions, 360 degrees, and they pick up movement easily. Now, we can use the eyes by setting out deer decoys, for one thing. The ears. They can swivel in all directions, cupping the sound, There are some sounds that hunters can make to attract deer, too. Now the nose. This has been trumped way out of proportion as a key sensory organ to a deer. A deer's sense of smell is far better than ours, but it only works when a deer is downwind of something. Anything downwind from a deer, it can't smell. So a deer's nose isn't nearly as versatile and important as we've been told. But fooling a deer's nose or attracting it with a scent can work under the right circumstances. Then there's the sense of taste. Eating, food, every animal responds to that, and deer are no different. For many years, bait has been the staple of hunters who want to attract deer to a specific area. Sugar beets, carrots, apples, corn, deer feed on all of them, and many types of food are used as deer bait. But this year, it's the year of creative deer hunting products. So let's look at some items that cater to a deer's sense of taste. This product is a new one on the market called Deer Candy. It actually looks like like maybe some bird seed or bird food, but it's a mixture of grains uh, that deer like that are mixed in molasses, which is why it's called candy. Brett St. Pierre is one of the guys who developed this. He says you just take it out of the tin and dump it right on the ground, set it on the ground kind of warm under these lights, so uh, it's kind of coming apart, but it's very sticky. You can see the molasses in here that holds this together. Deer apparently not only like the grain and the seeds, but they like this molasses. They find it very attractive, not just the taste of it, but the smell of it from a distance. Now, John Ford took some of this deer candy out to Bob Jones's Circle J Ranch in Portland. He has a 65-acre enclosure with a number of wild deer on it, and uh, boy, when the deer smelled this, got downwind from it, the reaction was immediate. The wind was blowing straight into the camera. The first deer that came across this field was about 10 feet downwind from the candy, which was marked by the aluminum foil on the stick. Now it stopped, walked up to the candy, and started munching. This mixture of molasses and grain was instantly recognized by the deer as good food. It chowed down on whitetail candy in much the same way that the previous deer by the two-ton bait pile was wolfing down the carrots. And here is the new wave of deer attractant products. These are things that, that, well, they aren't bait. They're marketed as mineral attractants. There's two kinds. This is called magic dust. This is called magnum buck. The magic dust, if we look at this, of course, smelling it, I don't smell anything at all in this. It's white. It doesn't really look like sugar or anything. It has uh, what appears to be little fibers in it. No odor. Put this on the ground and it's supposed to drive deer crazy. That's magic dust. The magnum buck, on the other hand, looks like, well, I don't know, it looks like sand, real lightweight sand or fertilizer or uh, something like that. It's very lightweight, though, and it does have a, oh, a strong odor 
of what appears to be anise, which is a licorice type of odor. It's long been used by trappers and hunters to attract deer. It's a spice. But this does have a, a look at the ingredients on the label here. Just a ton of minerals. And these are supposed to be good for the deer as well as attract deer to the spot on the ground. Let's go to the magic dust first of all and let Scott Yarborough give us his sales pitch. So what do we got here? This is uh, Michigan Magic Dust, which is a six minerals that when mixed with water creates catnip for deer. Some people call it cocaine for deer. Okay. You just pour it in five gallons of creek, lake, or pond water. Stir it for just about a minute. The best place to use it is right where two deer trails come together, which we're doing here today. Just pour it out into about a four foot area. And in about, oh, three days to a week, the deer should be on this and they'll come to this all season long. It's cheaper than bait, it lasts longer than bait, and you can't see it like you can a big bait pile. Magnum Buck, this product is applied to the soil the same way Product manager Matt Radzilowski shows the alternative method. The instructions on Magnum Buck say you should turn over the soil and rake it up in a five-foot radius. Either pour a liquid mixture or put the powder on the ground and mix it in a little. In a week or two, wildlife activity should be evident, and in several weeks, the deer should paw the ground, chew the soil, tear up the area, apparently trying to get the salt or minerals or something from the soil. Matt put out several plots of each product in an area where we frequently see deer, and here's a report. The weather has kind of scotched some of our hopes for some clear tracks. You can see right there in that depression, there is a deer track full of water. It just rained in the past 24 hours. In fact, a couple hours ago it rained. But this plot is one of the magic dust. We got a shot a day or two after we set it out, Matt. Yeah, I had almost immediate response uh, approximately two, three days after we put out the magic dust. I had deer going through here just pawing through it. And now, a week later, where we hoped that it would be kind of tore up, what did this look like uh, two days ago? Two days ago, uh, I, I removed any deer track that was in there. I just gave it a nice thorough raking just to see how much more deer were coming in the following day. And you can see we did have quite a bit of rain here and kind of washed off most of the tracks we did have. But that is supposed to activate this. It's supposed to activate oh. it and really get the deer going. And yeah, we'll keep an eye on it. Test plot number two has a newly created deer trail coming out of the woods along the edge here of this field. This is the Magnum Buck plot, which was created the same day as the Magic Dust plot about a week ago. And Matt, you've been raking it up, uh, and it looks like this is about in the same condition as the other one. Uh, we don't have the standing water in any of the depressions, but... Yeah, uh, same thing, just raked everything through and we're still waiting for the big amounts of deer to come through here and start uh, tasting the product. Okay, we got uh, two more plots to check real quick. The first two plots were raked. The third was uncultivated ground where Scott Yarborough poured the liquid solution of magic dust. It appeared to kill the grass. You could see some of the whitish residue, but there was no evidence we could see of deer pawing up the ground yet. Now, it could be that these mineral attractants take several weeks to work. And plot number four, this is our control plot. This is actual deer bait. We got some hay, got some corn, got some apple mash from, from sque freshly squeezed apples here. Uh, Maddie, it's attracted a lot of, <laughs> bees. of bees, but I really don't see anything in the way of deer activity here either. No, not yet. It doesn't appear to be. I, I did see a woodchuck here the other day, and that's about all that I have seen feeding so far. <laughs> okay, so our report <laughs> on the magic dust, magnum buck, and bait pile uh, here at the end of September is None of it has been spectacular, but maybe the good stuff is to come. Hopefully so. Uh, we'll report that <laughs> in a future show. So if you want to appeal to a deer's sense of taste, I mean, you have choices here. The traditional bait like corn, uh, there's the deer candy that they can also smell from, from a short distance away, and we have the magnum buck, the magic dust, these mineral attractants. We're going to be testing all of these, seeing how they compare with each other as the season progresses because that's the important thing, how these work during hunting season.
far more important than how they work before hunting season. But what about a deer's sense of smell? Now this is something that is far overrated by hunters for years and years. The deal on smell is that, that the odor has to be carried by the air to the deer's nose. Now this is fine if the deer is directly downwind and the odor is coming to its nose. But what if it's blowing off to the side or another direction? A deer's nose is useless. Uh, but there are some things that you can do in relation to a deer's nose that can help you as a hunter. A key thing you have to realize about a deer's sense of smell is that it can identify a predator by its odor. They know what meat-eating animals smell like. We all exude odors that are the result of eating meat, and these meat-eating odors scare deer. But there are three things a hunter can do to keep this odor from alarming a deer. Number one, stay downwind. If the breeze is blowing from the deer towards you, a deer can be within several feet of your body and not smell you at all. But if the wind is blowing towards the deer, you have two options. One is to use a cover scent of some type. Put an odor in the air that minimizes your own odor by overpowering it. Or you can wear clothing that helps minimize the odor that you're generating. What we got here is a uh, scent lock suit. It uh, has activated charcoal in here. It's supposed to absorb all odors, all human scent and everything. And what you do is you put this charcoal suit on your ordinary clothes, and then on top of it, I've got my Gore-Tex camo. And what you have to do to activate this is you stick the, what your outerwear is going to be along with the scent lock suit in the dryer for 50 minutes and let it uh, fluff through, and then put it in a sealed plastic bag to, to keep any odors from uh, happening. So... So, Johnny, what we're going to do here is Zach's going to go out with the suit on out in the field. I'm going to go out with just normal body odors, uh, typically what a hunter would have out in the field. We're going to go test out the suit, just lay out in the field. Zach will be at one end, I'll be at the other, and just see how the deer react. Ready to give it a try? Yeah, let's do it. Let's go. Zachary Trost was lying flat on the ground, hidden in the grass, below that blaze orange hat that was propped on a stick. He was wearing the scent lock suit. Matt Radzilowski was 75 yards away under the other blaze orange hat. The wind was blowing towards the camera. John Ford was downwind under some trees about 75 yards from both Zach and Matt. Now, a deer wandered about 20 yards from Zach, directly downwind from him, and for a while it seemed she didn't smell that human odor at all. This distance is incredibly close for a deer. 20 yards downwind from a human, normally the scent would be so strong the deer would snort and take off flagging its tail. This doe seemed to detect something in the air, enough to cause her to walk off briskly, but with her tail down. She didn't appear alarmed, just a little concerned. The scent lock suit seemed to help. If Zach was bow hunting, he could have gotten off a shot. On the other side of the field, where Matt was lying without any special odor protection, a buck walked about 30 or 40 yards on the downwind side. Now, it looked closer because the hat was on a high stick, but both Matt and John figured it was about 35 yards away. This buck had no doubts. The human odor was strong. Its tail went up, and it took off running. A group of deer followed it, each getting a snootful of human scent as they crossed downwind from Matt. Now, if you doubt the effect of the wind, check this out. While John was hidden in a blind made from a pile of pine trees, this fawn walked in front of him about 10 feet away. But the fawn is upwind, and there's no way it could catch John's scent. Its ears and eyes work in all directions, but its nose only catches odors coming downwind to it. It is possible to create a scent for deer that are downwind, and here's the newest one. It's a deer lure cover scent that smokes. It turns the wind into your ally instead of your enemy. Um, it's like an incense stick or a punk stick. There's approximately six sticks in each, layer, in each uh, package, and they'll go for approximately two hours. They're easy to light. You just turn around and take and light two sticks, and you put them in the, the little uh, sleeves in the bottom of the bucket, and you stick them in the ground. You put an apple and a urine right next to each other. Got to be. You gotta burn an apple in the urine. There's eight different flavors in that apple stick, we believe. Now, why do you put it in the bucket? First and foremost, we don't want to burn down the forest primeval. There's not an open flame, but there is a hot coal on the end of them things. Now you want the wind to blow, big time. 
You want to set the bucket out. You want to place the sticks at the distance you want to shoot. Wherever you want that boy to be standing, that's where you want to put them. And it doesn't really make much difference which way the wind's blowing. Um, where you're concealed is important um, due to your movement. Um, as far as smelling you, this stuff is so potent that chances of the deer smelling you when this is burning is very, very slim. About 95% of the deer will, in fact, come up there and stick their nose right in the smoke. Not, not every deer is going to come up and stick their nose in the smoke. Some of them will stay back a little ways. Um, the most important thing is that it doesn't frighten them, and they'll come up there and mill around. They might stay back about 10 feet or so from the sticks, which really don't care. John Ford said he was amazed at the reaction to the deer scent sticks. The deer did what Rick Dawson said they do. They were curious about the smoke, what their noses couldn't smell, their eyes could see, and they were intrigued with that swirling smoke. 